In a lush tropical land, there was a man whose home lay close to a river notorious for its seasonal floods. Year after year, he toiled to erect a dam, believing this barrier would shield his abode and belongings from the relentless waters. With each passing season, his efforts intensified, constructing ever more formidable barriers, convinced that this was the key to outwitting nature's fury. Yet, in an ironic twist of fate, a particularly fierce flood shattered his creation wreaking havoc far beyond what the unbridled river would have caused on its own. Amidst the ruins of his efforts, the man faced a profound realization. His quest to dominate the whims of nature had only heightened his vulnerability to its whimsical might. This tale mirrors our own struggles with control. Like the man and his dam, we often believe that by exerting control, we can tame life's unpredictable torrents. But this story teaches us a crucial lesson echoed in the words of the Stoic philosopher Epictetus. Some things are in our control, and others not. Our protagonist's singular focus on the dam blinded him to alternative solutions, such as diversifying his fluid defenses or preparing for potential breaches. His fixation on control rendered him unprepared for the very chaos he sued to master. Dear listener, let this story be a reminder. Our attempts to control can often lead us into a paradox where the very act of control makes us more susceptible to the unpredictable forces around us. Let us embrace the wisdom of the Stoics, finding strength not in control, but in our resilience and adaptability to the ever-changing tides of life. Number 1 in our relentless pursuit of control over life's uncertainties, we often find ourselves ensnared in a paradoxical trap. The more we strive to control, the more we are controlled by our own efforts. This ironic twist is vividly illustrated in the concept of the paradox of control. It's a stark reminder that despite our best laid plans and defenses against future adversities, life's unpredictable nature can always surprise us, often in ways we least expect. This paradox teaches us a profound lesson about resilience. Ironically, by attempting to exert excessive control over our external circumstances, we inadvertently weaken our ability to adapt to life's unpredictable twists and turns. The more we try to dominate every aspect of our existence, the more vulnerable we become to the capricious whims of fortune. It's as if, in our quest to master the external world, we lose mastery over ourselves. Reflecting on this, a Stoic philosopher once wisely remarked, We suffer more often in imagination than in reality. This statement encapsulates the essence of our struggle with control. We often conjure up scenarios in our minds, trying to preemptively tackle problems that may never materialize. In doing so, we become entangled in a web of our own making, where our fears and anxieties exert more control over us than the situations we are trying to manage. The paradox of control as abstract and counterintuitive as it may seem, underscores a fundamental truth about human limitations. It serves as a humbling reminder that our efforts to dominate and orchestrate every facet of the universe are not only futile but can also be counterproductive. This video essay delves into this paradox, unraveling its intricate layers and connecting it to the modern life we lead. In today's fast-paced world, where control and predictability are highly prized, this paradox offers a valuable perspective. It encourages us to reevaluate our relationship with control and to recognize the wisdom in focusing on what truly lies within our power, our responses and attitudes. By doing so, we can navigate life's unpredictable waters with greater serenity and resilience, embracing the flow of existence rather than struggling against it. This approach not only brings peace of mind, but also prepares us to face life's challenges with a calm and adaptable spirit. Number two. Next, we're diving into a timeless lesson about the paradox of control, a concept that's as relevant now as it was centuries ago. Picture this. King Canute, in a moment of sheer arrogance, commands the ocean tide to stop, to prevent his feet and robes from getting wet. It's a vivid image, isn't it? But as you'd expect, the tide pays no heed to the king's orders and continues its relentless journey. This story isn't just a historical anecdote. 
It's a powerful metaphor for understanding our own limitations. King Canute's experience is a stark reminder that, no matter how powerful we think we are, there are forces in life we simply cannot control. It's a humbling realization, one that challenges the illusion of control we often cling to. Many of us fall into the trap of believing we can exert control over others or even over our own bodies. We try to shape people's actions, steer their decisions, but ultimately, they follow their own paths, independent of our desires. Similarly, we might think we have dominion over our physical selves. We try to defy aging, illness, and the inevitable changes that time brings, but despite our best efforts, our bodies follow their natural course. This brings us to a profound statement by the Stoic philosopher Epictetus, as recorded in the Enchiridion. Some things are within our power, while others are not. It's a simple yet profound truth. The story of King Canute and Epictetus's wisdom both point to the same essential lesson, the importance of recognizing the limits of our control. As we reflect on this, let's imagine a gardener who loves their plants and tends to them with great care. Despite their efforts, sometimes the plants thrive and sometimes they don't. The gardener quickly learns that while they can provide the best conditions, water, sunlight, and nutrients, the growth of the plants is ultimately not in their hands. This story, much like King Canute's, teaches us about accepting the things we cannot control and focusing our energy on what we can influence. So, dear listeners, let's strive to recognize the boundaries of your control. Understand that, while you can influence many aspects of your life, some things are simply beyond your grasp. Embrace this truth with humility and focus your efforts on what lies within your power. This acceptance isn't a sign of weakness. It's a mark of wisdom and a step towards a more peaceful and fulfilling life. Remember, what you try to control, controls you. Let go of the illusion of absolute control and you'll find a path to true freedom and serenity. Number 3. In this episode, we're diving into a profound Stoic principle beautifully encapsulated by Epictetus. Within our power are opinion, motivation, desire, aversion, and in a word, whatever is of our own doing. Not within our power are our body, our property, reputation, office, and, in a word, whatever is not of our own doing. This bold statement, though seemingly black and white, is the bedrock of Stoic philosophy in dealing with the external world. The Stoics, like Epictetus, drew a stark line between what's in our control and what's not. They taught that by focusing on what we can control, our thoughts, desires, and actions, we build inner strength. This resilience shields us from the unpredictable nature of life and the elements beyond our control. Imagine if Epictetus had seen King Canute trying to command the sea. He would likely have deemed him a colossal fool. Picture Canute also attempting to control the wind, the behavior of those around him or even the aging of his body. He would quickly realize that the wind is untamable, people are unpredictable, and his body has its own agenda. The more Canute tried to dominate the world, the more the world showed him his lack of control. What a lesson in humility that would be. The story of King Canute, alongside Epictetus's teachings, underscores the importance of recognizing our limits. By focusing on what we can influence and accepting life's inherent uncertainties and uncontrollable aspects, we cultivate a more balanced, resilient, and fulfilling life. Let's take a moment to reflect on this. How often do we, like Canute, try to control the uncontrollable? How does this struggle affect our peace of mind and happiness? The lesson here is clear. Focus on what's within your power. Let go of the rest. This is not just a strategy for inner peace. It's a blueprint for a life well lived. Remember, what you try to control ends up controlling you. So, embrace the paradox of control and find freedom in focusing on what truly matters. Your actions, your choices, your inner world. This, my friends, is the path to a serene and resilient life. Number four. In a distant time, there lived a Taoist farmer whose horse unexpectedly escaped. This event brought his neighbors to his doorstep, offering sympathy for his misfortune. Yet the farmer, steeped in Taoist philosophy, calmly replied, Who knows what's good or bad? This response puzzled his neighbors. The very next day, in a surprising turn of events, 
The horse returned, accompanied by a wild mare. The neighbors, now in a celebratory mood, came to congratulate him. But the farmer, unfazed, repeated his enigmatic words. Who knows what's good or bad? As time passed, the farmer's son attempted to tame the wild mare but suffered a fall, breaking his leg. The neighbors, once again, gathered to offer their condolences. The farmer, consistent in his wisdom, responded, Who knows what's good or bad? This pattern continued when the army arrived in the village, drafting young men for a war. The farmer's son, due to his injury, was exempted. The neighbors rejoiced at this stroke of good fortune, but the farmer, true to his philosophy, remained unmoved, saying, Who knows what's good or bad? This ancient tale embodies the paradox of control, a concept deeply resonant with Stoic teachings. It highlights our human tendency to label events as good or bad, and our futile attempts to steer life's unpredictable course. This story is a profound reminder of the Stoic principle, echoed by Epictetus. Some things are in our control and others not. It teaches us to embrace life's inherent uncertainty and to understand that our perceptions of good and bad are often transient and misleading. By adopting a stance of humility and acceptance, we can navigate life's ebbs and flows with a serene mind, much like the stoic farmer, who understood that what we try to control can, in turn, control us. This narrative, rich in wisdom, serves as a beacon, guiding us towards a life of resilience and inner peace, where we learn to coexist with the unpredictable nature of existence. Number 5. In the intricate dance of life where the tides of control ebb and flow, there lies a profound paradox. The more we strive to control, the more we are controlled. This concept, deeply resonant with men aged 30 to 65 embarking on a journey of self-discovery, is vividly illustrated in the tale of a woman whose fear of job loss ultimately led her to unexpected success. Her story, a testament to the unpredictable nature of fate, echoes the timeless wisdom of Stoicism, particularly in the words of Epictetus. We cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. This woman, gripped by the fear of unemployment, spending years in a state of anxiety and unrest. Yet when the feared event finally transpires, it unfolds not as a catastrophe, but as a catalyst for transformation. Her initial despair morphs into a daring venture, opening a coffee shop, a dream long harbored in the recesses of her heart. This twist of fate leading to a thriving business serves as a stark reminder of life's inherent unpredictability and the futility of our worries. Her experience encapsulates a profound truth. What we often dread as misfortune may in fact be a veiled blessing. Conversely, what we perceive as beneficial might lead us down a path of unforeseen challenges. This ambiguity in life's events, where understanding only crystallizes in retrospect, can be both daunting and liberating. For men navigating the complexities of midlife, this narrative offers a crucial lesson. The realization that life's outcomes are beyond our complete control invites a shift in perspective. It encourages a loosening of the grip on external circumstances, fostering a sense of serenity amidst life's inherent uncertainties. This approach, deeply rooted in modern life, suggests that embracing the unpredictable nature of the universe can lead to a more harmonious existence. It's a call to focus on our internal responses rather than external events, aligning with the stoic belief that true power lies in our reaction to what life presents us. In essence, the paradox of control teaches us that in the pursuit of controlling our lives, we often become prisoners of our own devices. Yet by acknowledging and accepting the limits of our influence, we open ourselves to a realm of possibilities where adaptability and resilience become our guiding stars. This philosophy, seamlessly woven into the fabric of contemporary life, offers a beacon of hope and guidance, encouraging us to navigate life's unpredictable waters with a calm and stoic spirit. Number 6. In this exploration of the paradox of control, we delve into a profound yet often overlooked aspect of our lives. Picture this. The more we try to grip the reins of the uncontrollable, the more we surrender our peace and happiness to forces beyond our grasp. 
It's like trying to hold onto water. The tighter you squeeze, the more it slips through your fingers. This relentless pursuit of control can lead us down a path of anxiety, stress, and frustration, leaving us feeling powerless when things don't go our way. Consider the simple yet powerful example of parenting. In our quest to steer our children in a certain direction, we often find ourselves at their mercy, reacting to their unpredictable nature. As the wise Epictetus once said, when we attempt to control the uncontrollable, particularly external factors, we're setting ourselves up for a tumultuous journey. Our mental state becomes a puppet, dancing to the strings of external circumstances. This paradox is not just about parenting, it's a universal struggle. We all have faced moments where our desire for control over others, over situations, or even over our future, has left us in a state of unrest. It's a natural human tendency to seek control, to feel secure in the unpredictable theater of life. Yet, ironically, this pursuit often leads to an illusion of control, as fragile as a house of cards, ready to collapse at the slightest breeze. Now let's bring this closer to home. Imagine you're planning a big event. You've got every detail mapped out, but suddenly, the weather turns, throwing everything into disarray. That frustration, that sense of helplessness you feel is the paradox of control in action. It's a stark reminder that while we can steer our ship, we can't calm the stormy seas. So, what's the takeaway for us, the seekers of wisdom in this chaotic world? It's about learning to distinguish between what we can control and what we can't. It's about understanding that our peace of mind shouldn't be tethered to the whims of external forces. Instead, we should focus on our responses, our attitudes, and our actions. By doing so, we reclaim our power. Not over the world, but over ourselves. Remember, in the grand tapestry of life, it's not the external events that define our journey, but how we choose it to navigate them. Let this be a guiding light in your quest for a serene and resilient spirit. Number 7. Alan Watts poignantly captured a profound truth. The desire for security and the feeling of insecurity are the same thing. To hold your breath is to lose your breath. This statement invites us to ponder. Is our relentless pursuit of control merely a manifestation of deep-seated insecurities? What fears are we harboring that drive us to exert dominion over every facet of our external environment? And if indeed this is a reflection of our fears, how can we address it? This quest for control, it appears, is deeply rooted in our fear of the unknown, the unpredictable, and the uncontrollable elements of life. In an attempt to shield ourselves from life's inherent chaos and uncertainty, we often find ourselves grappling to control the world around us, clinging to a deceptive sense of security. However, this approach overlooks a crucial truth. Real peace and security are not found in the external world, but are cultivated within. Ralph Waldo Emerson, the American philosopher, wisely noted, Nothing can bring you peace but yourself. It's in accepting, rather than resisting, life's inherent unpredictability that we find true resilience. By acknowledging that certain aspects of life are beyond our control, we can shift our focus to what is within our power our thoughts, emotions, and actions. Seneca, the Stoic philosopher, once remarked, We suffer more often in imagination than in reality. Recognizing and relinquishing this imagined need for control liberates us from unnecessary suffering and anxiety. In learning to embrace the uncontrollable, we discover the very security and peace we sought through control. Instead of fixating on the uncontrollable, our energy is better invested in fostering inner resilience and adaptability. This shift requires embracing flexibility, openness, and the readiness to adapt as necessary. Carl Jung, the renowned psychiatrist, encapsulated this beautifully. I am not what happened to me. I am what I choose to become. By accepting life's unpredictability, we can let go of our need for control, focusing instead on cultivating the inner strength and courage to face whatever comes our way. Seneca's words resonate deeply here. Our lack of confidence is not the result of difficulty. The difficulty comes from our lack of confidence. In embracing this wisdom, we find the key to navigating life's tumultuous waters with a serene mind and a resilient spirit.
much like a devoted stoic on their journey through life. Number eight, life is like a handful of sand. The tighter you grasp it, the more it slips away. Only by gently cradling it in your palm can you keep the sand, and only by learning to accept adversity can you find peace of mind. On a Saturday morning, I was rushing through the streets of New York to catch the 957 train from my house to New Jersey. Unfortunately, I arrived at 959 and the train waits for no one. Initially, I thought it was okay. I would catch the 1015 train. But then, a cancellation notice appeared and the next train wasn't until 11 or yards. A feeling of frustration and self-pity welled up inside me. However, after calming down I realized there was nothing I could do but wait for the next train. So, I had some snacks and rested in the mean team. Oh, surely, I wouldn't handle the situation this way, and neither would most people. On the train, I looked out the window and listened intently to the conversations around me. People were expressing their anger about the canceled train to their loved ones and friends. This suddenly reminded me of the origin of human suffering. Most of us are control freaks to the point of madness, living in a world where we can't control anything that happens around us. We constantly try to monitor every move of our environment to make it meet our needs. We easily get angry when things don't go our way. We always fantasize about things that aren't real, about how things should work. And when that fantasy isn't fulfilled, we are suddenly shocked. So, what's the solution here? How can we prevent frustration from arising and disturbing our minds every time the world doesn't operate the way we want? I know what you're thinking, that we should restrain our control frenzy. In some respects, that's true. But there's more to consider. We need to redirect the flow of our control energy. We can't control the outside world, but we have complete control over our inner elements. Yet most of us don't pay attention to this. These are understanding, decision-making, and action. Yes, that's what you can control. That's what you're responsible for. Number nine. Tell me, when was the last time you tried to control your thoughts? When was the last time you were angry about an action you took instead of the result it brought? I've wasted so much time worrying and stressing about things completely out of my control. I spent hours struggling trying to manipulate them as I wanted or complaining when things didn't go my way. They never made me feel lighter or satisfied. Only when I learned to let go of everything did I start to feel life become more comfortable and enjoyable, even though many things still didn't go my way. Just like sand slips away the tighter you grasp it, only by gently cradling it can you keep it. Whenever a train is canceled, a car breaks down, it rains on a beach day, or whenever life throws lemons at me, I follow three simple steps to feel more serene and relieved. Number 10. 1. Acceptance. In life, we often find ourselves at a crossroads where things don't go as planned. Much like the day I discovered my train had been canceled. Initially, I struggled to distinguish between what was within my control and what wasn't. The cancellation was a fact I couldn't alter, and the next train wouldn't arrive for another hour. However, the way I responded to this predicament was entirely in my hands. This scenario is a classic example of the paradox of control. We are constantly faced with situations that are beyond our control, yet how we react to them is always our choice. We can either accept these circumstances or waste our energy in frustration and complaints. But let's be honest, does complaining ever bring us any closer to happiness or resolution? The answer is a resounding no. Acceptance doesn't mean passive resignation. It's about recognizing the limits of our influence and choosing to focus on what we can change, our perspective, our emotions, and our actions. As the Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, we cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. This profound insight encapsulates the essence of Stoicism and the art of living a fulfilled life. So, when you're confronted with life's inevitable hurdles, remember this story. Whether it's a delayed train, a sudden downpour, or any other curveball life throws at you, your power lies in your response. By embracing acceptance and focusing on what you can control, you transform your experience of the world. This is the paradox of control. What you try to control ends up controlling you. But when you let go and focus on your response, you reclaim your power and find peace. Number 11, 2. 
Seek peace. In the journey of life, especially for men between the ages of 30 and 65, the pursuit of control often becomes a paradoxical endeavor. As we stride through the complexities of our existence, it's crucial to recognize that what we try to control, in turn, controls us. This paradox of control is a subtle yet profound truth that resonates deeply with the Stoic philosophy, which teaches us the art of letting go and finding peace and acceptance. Consider this. If you've accepted a situation, the next logical step is to find peace in your decision. This is not a passive resignation, but an active embrace of reality. I firmly believe that everything in life happens for a reason, though that reason may not always be immediately apparent. Take, for instance, missing the 957 train. Initially, it might seem like a frustrating setback. However, upon reflection, it could be a hidden blessing. Perhaps it was a way to avoid an unforeseen accident, or maybe it was an opportunity to inspire others through this very experience. It could even be a chance for personal growth, like cultivating patience. The Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, Some things are in our control and others not. This profound statement encapsulates the essence of finding peace. The reason behind each event might remain a mystery, sometimes revealing itself over years, or perhaps remaining unknown forever. But the wisdom lies in understanding that if things were meant to be different, they would have been. This acceptance is not about giving up efforts, but about recognizing the limits of our control. In our modern lives, this concept is more relevant than ever. The fast-paced world constantly pushes us to take charge, to control every aspect of our lives. But it's essential to step back and realize that some things are beyond our control. The key is to focus on our responses, our attitudes towards these events. By doing so, we can find a serene state of mind, unshaken by life's ebbs and flows. This approach is not just philosophical, but immensely practical. It allows us to channel our energies towards what we can change, and in the process we gain a sense of empowerment and calm. So as you navigate through the complexities of life, is to remember this paradox of control. Embrace the stoic wisdom of discerning what is within your control and what is not. In doing so, you'll find that peace is not just a destination, but a path you walk on every day, a path that leads to a more fulfilling and resilient life. Number 12.3 We delve into the profound concept of gratitude, a cornerstone in the stoic journey. Picture this. I'm at the station, my train's been canceled. An inconvenience, yes. But amidst this, I find small blessings, the means to enjoy a snack, extra time to immerse myself in a book, the gift of health and breath. It's a simple yet powerful reminder. Where we direct our focus expands. Dwelling on life's hurdles only magnifies them, yet acknowledging our blessings, no matter how small, can shift our perspective dramatically. Imagine a world where everything aligns perfectly with our desires, catching the train just in time, every time. Such perfection is rare, almost mythical. If our happiness hinges solely on these flawless moments, we're setting ourselves up for a life riddled with frustration and discontent. The Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, We cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. This resonates deeply with our topic today. So the next time life throws a curveball, like a missed train, resist the urge to lash out in frustration. Instead, embrace acceptance, seek inner peace, and cultivate gratitude. This shift in mindset isn't just about making peace with the present. It's about transforming our entire experience of life. By practicing gratitude, even in the face of life's inevitable disruptions, we open ourselves to a world of beauty and serenity that was always there, just waiting for us to notice. Remember, what you try to control, controls you, but in gratitude, you find freedom and joy. Let's embark on this journey together, embracing each moment with a grateful heart, and watch as life unfolds in its most beautiful form. As we conclude today's exploration of the paradox of control, remember that the true essence of Stoicism lies in embracing what we can influence and releasing our grip on what lies beyond our control. This journey isn't just about understanding these principles. 
it's about living them. Each day presents a new canvas to practice the art of letting go and focusing on our own actions and responses. I encourage you to reflect on how this paradox manifests in your life. How have you experienced the freedom that comes from releasing the need to control the uncontrollable? Share your stories and insights in the comments below. Your experiences not only enrich our stoic community but also serve as a beacon of inspiration for others on this path. Remember, in the wise words of Epictetus, we cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. Let's continue to grow together in wisdom and resilience. Thank you for joining me on Stoic in Your Life and until our next meeting, may you find strength and serenity in the Stoic way.